Hi, Serena here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Recently, I went pen shopping because I wanted to try some new pens for my mixed media work and for bullet journaling. And I thought it would be interesting to review some here. So, let me show you what I've got. Alright, now first I have the Kuretake Millennium Collection. Now this these pens I've used quite a bit. I use these in my watercolor journal and I really like them. Um, they're the older ones. Uh, the newer ones I think are not silver. They're like a tan color, but I can review them just as well. Okay. And then I've got the Tombow uh, brush pens. Now one of these has a hard tip, uh, the other has a soft tip. So we'll look at those. I've got the Faber-Castell Modern Lettering. Those are pit pens. Now these are India ink, which is nice because they are waterproof. And the different brush tips there, they've got brushes and nibs. Um, we'll look at this one, which is a colored set. This is the Artist Pit Pens, also from Faber-Castell. Um, and they've got various tips on them as well. They've got the brush tips and the fine point. Uh, those are also India ink, which is interesting to have those in colors. I like that. Now I got another set from Faber-Castell, which is for lettering art, just in different colors. So those were all blues and purples. These are, uh, give me some different colors there. Then I have a calligraphy art, also from Faber-Castell. Um, I'm not getting any endorsements, it just happened to be the brand that the, my local store carried or that I found online that fit what I was looking for as far as, let's say, um, waterproof qualities and so forth. Uh, but this is a very interesting set because it's got the muted colors. I really like that. I'm going to like this one for journaling. Um, India Ink, it's archival, waterproof, permanent, light fast, and odorless. So that's going to be an interesting set to use. Then I thought I would investigate some white pens because I do have some black paper that I like to doodle on and do some things on. I want to get into uh, using metallics a little bit and experiment with those. But this is the Uniball Sino pen. I know it's very popular. A lot of people uh, get this. I got a three pack on Amazon for a very reasonable price. I think they were like two dollars each or so. But we'll look at that. And then at Walmart I found uh, these painters pens. Uh, so we'll take a look at those as well for white. Alright, so I'll close this down and open these all up because you don't need to see me fumbling with all the scissors and such. And then we'll get back to reviewing. Okay, so we're back. I've opened up all the boxes, packages, and what I've done is make a little chart here so that you can see um, as I go through what they look like as I swatch them through. And on this side, I have a little chart that I've made where I'll just do check boxes uh, for things like, you know, do they come in colors? Are they in black? Are they waterproof? Um, what type of tip they have? Do they have an odor? And do they bleed through? And I'm just going to use a, a basic piece of copy paper to see how they bleed through because a lot of journal paper is not much thicker than that. So that'll give you folks who do journaling a little idea of uh, what the qualities are in, as far as transparency or bleed through. Okay, but let me get a little tighter on this section now so that you can see how I'm doing the swatching and I'll fill this out as I go along and in the end I'll let you see the whole chart all together. All right, so first we'll start with the Millennium Collection. Uh, there are five tip sizes. They're all point tips. They are uh, acid-free, archival, waterproof, non-bleeding, and they come in 005, 01, 03, 05, and 08. I'll do them in order here. Of course, you can see it's kind of... My poor container is worn out here a little bit. I've used it quite a bit. But here is the uh, .005. And I'll just do a line across. It's a very fine line. It's not very thick. And I'll just do test. Very fine. Nice for fine work. Um, if you're doing any kind of 
uh, pen and ink drawing, nice for that. Here is the O1. And of course, we expect it to be a little bit thicker. You can see that a little better. Test. Right. And the O3, I think I'm running out of ink on that one a little bit. I finally used that up. Bear with me, I'm trying to write sideways, and it's a little hard to do that. That's the test on that one. And the f this is the O5. Again, thicker. I tend to use the O5 and the O8 a lot in my journaling, uh, in my watercolor journal, because it gives just the nicest line. It's not too thick, uh, but you can still see it. Okay, see there you see that. All right, now I'm going to check off the uh, checklist here. Of course, those are all black. Um, they are waterproof, and these are uh, bullet points. Um, I have to take my word on it. There's no odor, and let's check the bleed through. I'll use a handy dandy paper towel underneath a piece of copy paper, and let's see what happens with that. Okay, do we have bleed through? Mm, not, no heavy bleed through, but you can see the line a little bit. So just to give you an idea of that. So I'm going to say yes because some people would not want any line showing through. So that's the Millennium. Now, the next ones we're going to test are the Tombow. And these are, one of them is a bullet and one is a brush, I believe. Okay, I think this one is a bullet. That one, we'll try that. Oh no, that's a little bit of a soft tip. It has some give to it. Oh, that we have to do calligraphy with, I think. Uh, so what shall we call that one? I don't know. They call it, let's see, it's a hard point and a soft tip. So that's a soft tip. Um, I don't really know if it's a brush or a bullet. Um, I guess I'm going to call it a brush. It's, a f it's more of a fine brush. More of a fine brush on that one. Uh, now this one is a little different. Oh, that was the brush. Okay, this is not. Alright, so this one is more of a bullet but it, it does have some give to it. I feel that in there. Alright, now these are not waterproof. That's the only thing about them. Um, unfortunately, I do like using this for my watercolor journals where I'll, I'll draw first and then I'll paint over it. So unfortunately, they're not waterproof. As far as odor, no, nope, no odor. And let's try bleed through. Let's see what we get with bleed through. And this is just one of them that, if it's the same brand, it's going to give you the same result, but that's the thicker one. That one you can also see a little bit. And I think you're going to see that in all of them, even though I'm calling it that they bleed through. Um, you know, it's not bad. All right. So let's take a look at the next ones. Now these are the modern lettering ones from Faber-Castell. Okay, they do have, I kind of made a little mess of this when I opened them, but they do have two brushes and it looks like a, a, a nib, chisel nib, and then also a bullet. So they've got all. So this gives you an idea of what the brush is there, and this is not sized, it just gives you that. So I will, that's the test, I probably should have made these a little bit bigger, but it does come in a brush, so I'll check that off. And this is the other one. This is also a brush. Oh wow, that's I see the, the ink comes out quite readily. Now this is on watercolor paper, so you'll see it's a little bit um, 
it bleeds, a, it's kind of fuzzy on the edges a little bit, but um, you know, you use these for different things. So if it's not, if you don't want to use it for, uh, you find another pen to use for watercolor if this doesn't suit your needs. This one's a chisel. Here's a chisel. I should have made these bigger, but it gives you an idea. Okay, so this one's a chisel nib. So it does come with a chisel nib. And the last one is 1.5. Now that's a fine, you know, a bullet. So that's just... I like the... the um, I like the combination. I like the variety that they give you in this set. That's very nice. And the um, the ink flowed very readily. It was very juicy ink. Okay, so these are also black. And uh, are they waterproof? Let's see. These are the modern lettering. I believe the modern lettering, all the Faber-Castells are Yes, India Ink Archival Waterproof, Permanent Life Fast, and Odorless. So we'll say it's odorless as well. I'll double check. Yes, odorless. And let's check for the bleed through. So you see, it does. You can see it a little bit. I probably really shouldn't say these are bleed through because they really aren't um, strongly bleeding through your paper. But we'll leave it at that. Now, the next ones we have are the Good Vibes. These are the colored ones. These are the blue ones that I've gotten. We'll take a look at these. This one's a fine point here. This is the Oath, the point three. And that's nice there. This would be good for journaling. Okay. Now, we know these are in colors, so we'll check that box off. And this is a bullet, so I'll check that off because it's definitely a bullet. Um, no, no odor to it. Let's see if we can test that. Of course, that's a lighter color. You can still see it a little bit, but I don't think it's as show through, see through as the others. So I'm going to leave that off. All right, this one is brush. Okay, so it's going to be thicker. Oh, look at that nice color. Nice color there. Okay, so these are colors. And this one is a brush. It comes in a brush. Check that off. Maybe with the darker one, we'll check the bleed through too. Now this one is a brush also. It gives you the B for the brush. That's very light. Can't even see it. Here's one that's a little darker. This one is a brush as well. I like that color. Try this one. This is a brush as well. Oh, that's pretty. Right. And the last one is purple. That's also a brush. All right. So let's see with the purple if we have any bleed through because that will be the darkest color. Let's try that. There we go. And with the lighter color in this set, I'm not quite sure. See, it's about the same. Maybe I shouldn't have listed these as having bleed through because most journal paper is a little thicker than copy paper. So I think, well, if I left it as bleed through with the others, I'm going to list, list it for this one too because they're all about the same. At least you know what degree of bleed through there is. Now, all right, so the last one we checked, we looked at that were the colors that were blue. That's the good vibes in the blues and purples. All right. This one is going to be the lettering art, also from Faber-Castell, and all brush tips. So let's take a look at those colors. I wanted some colors. Of course, we're starting out with similar blue here. That almost might be the same as some of those. These are more fine tips here. So these come in colors. I'll check off the color box. These are waterproof. 
These are archival India ink waterproof, permanent, light, fast, and odorless. So very nice qualities there. Uh, so there's no odor. Uh, they are brush pens and they are waterproof. Let's check for the light fast, uh, for the bleed through. And I don't expect these to perform any differently than the others. They're going to be a little bit of see-through in there, but not, not heavily. There's your bleed through on that one. You can barely see it, just like the others. They're all performing about the same as far as the bleed through. But since I checked off bleed through on the others, I'll check it off on this one too, to be fair. All right, that's that one. Then it comes in a pink magenta. Let's see what color that is. That's interesting. Well, that's nice. Okay. And we've got an orange. Oh, that's handy. Certainly won't use these for watercolor work, but definitely in my journaling. And this one is a surprise. Uh, oh, that's almost like a. Uh, oh, it's almost like a greenish color. It looks yellow, but it's almost like a greenish color. So that's nice. Let's take a look at some of these in as far as bleed through, because you might be interested in that. I'll just do these real quick here. That one, orange. Of course, the yellow or greenish one. We're not going to have very much on that very light color but take a look at that see so that's not bad just comparable or lighter than the others all right now we have the calligraphy art this is an interesting one this was the nice set that was uh, that had the muted browns and, and neutrals what's nice about this one it did come with a guide uh, it came with a calligraphy guide so it's just a pamphlet but still it gives you a little bit of guidance there if you've never used uh, this type of pen before. It gives you a little bit of you know, the guidance and how to make different letters, practice strokes. That's nice. Of course it comes in English <laughs> and it's got a little history of it I guess. And a sample alphabet to try. So I think it's very nice of them that they include that with this. A nice starter set for anybody that wants to learn how to do calligraphy. Okay, so this comes with six pens. That's what the little numbers are next to here. It shows me how many how many uh, colors there are. So these are chisel points. These are all chisel points. So I'm going to have to bend over here a little bit. Oops, to get those on there. Wow, that one is not either. I'm not doing it right, or it's a little dry. That one feels dry. That one definitely feels dry. Mm, not satisfied with that. Okay, that was the light gray one. Let's check this one out. The chisel is almost, you have to give it even pressure because it's not an angled chisel, it's a cut straight across. So I'm trying to I'm trying to do it sideways there. Okay, we'll keep going. Let's see if this improves. The um, might be the first stroke or two that I'm getting wrong. Oh, that's a lovely color. I like that one. I definitely need a larger test surface here so you can see how these are writing, but it kind of gives you an idea. That one's almost the same. That one has a little bit more like a like a raw umber, raw sienna. Okay, let's check this one out. That's a nice deep color. Okay. And the last one. This one's black, which is good. I'm glad they include a black. Well, you really have to be careful that you give it a very even um, pressure with your hand that you're not, you tend to lean more toward one side and it doesn't give you coverage, but 
you have to make it very even the way you hold it. I guess that's that uh, calligraphy guide will be helpful <laughs> with that. Okay, so that's that. All right, so with these, uh, it does come in black and it comes in colors. Uh, it is. Is it waterproof? Yes, these are waterproof. They're uh, India ink. They're archival, waterproof, permanent, light fast, and odorless. And we'll see what happens there. Similar to the others. That you see a little bit more because it's a wider tip. But that's all. But since I put uh, bleed through on the others, you, I'll do it on this one too. Take it with a grain of salt or sand, however you say that. And um, and I'll go from there. Now, the last two are white, so I'm not going to be able to test them on here, of course. I'll fill out the chart, but I can't test them on here. What I do have is a uh, little sample pack that I got of Stonehenge Aquapress Black, and I've already used the Sino Pen on this one. Uh, so I can show you again a little bit on the uh, just playing with it, but I've already played with it a little bit on this. Uh, I just doodled a little, little bit, put some stars and the sun, plant a little cat there. Um, but you know, it's it's a nice. It get, does get a little bit of a uh, call it crust on it. I'll wipe that off a little bit, and it takes a little bit to get going. I've noticed, but once it does, then you get quite a nice line. Um, with this pen. And a lot of people use these, I see, to put highlights on some watercolor paintings that they've done, uh, or to use it on black. I like it on black. It's very nice. Uh, it's a nice pen. Nice thickness. It's not too thin, not too thick. So I do like that. Now let's mark this off. I'll take one of my uh, Millennium pens, pit pens, and check off for this one, which is the Sign O White. That's the Uniball Sino, and that is white. Well, the next one is Elmer's Painter's White. Okay, now this one is opaque, but the writing is so small, I can't really see if it's waterproof, but we'll test that later. But this one requires shaking. There's a little shaker ball in there that mixes it up and it's a pump pen so you have to press down hard on the uh, tip here but I have a paper that I've already kind of worked on and I had to refilm this section because it um, I filmed it off camera I don't have a monitor to show me so this is a section I was doing before and I'll just draw another little kind of thing here. See, though, you can see how it, the dots come out quite nicely. And if you draw like a moon here, you know, it's kind of a silly looking moon, <laughs> but that's what it looks like. And um, it does come in fine and broader tips. Now, this one is not completely opaque, as you can see there, um, but it's good for highlighters. Uh, highlighting. I know some people use it for like the dots I just showed you for snow uh, to depict stars on their paintings and things like that. So it's good for that. And let's see, odor. Um, there's a fine odor. It's just slight. It's kind of like Elmer's glue. So I wouldn't say on the chart here that it's. I'm going to check off the odor. It it really is not a major issue. So now let's get a brush and test for the waterproof qualities of these. Alright, so I'm back. Let's take a look and see how these perform, these white papers, or these white inks. And first for the Sino, uh, of course I've got a little uh, craft brush. I won't use one of my good brushes, but I have these on hand for little craft uh, things that I have to do. Let's take a look and see how that works, if it bleeds or... No, it doesn't look like it is. It's fading a little, well, a little bit. I'm really having to rub, though, to get some of the... Uh, I'm really having to rub, so it's not quite... If you just go over it lightly, if you do a light wash, it's going to darken, and then 
lighten up again I, I suppose as it dries but if you rub it you will get some lifting of the color of the white okay so that's for the Uniball Sino now I'll kind of blot that a little bit because I don't want to get that all over let's test the waterproof qualities of the Elmer's Painters white now I've got this page that I've doodled on a little bit let's see if I give it a, of course I've got just a little craft brush here and this does not seem to be coming up I'm scrubbing pretty hard and that's good so it's, oh, it's coming up a little bit on there but I just did those so maybe you have to let it dry a little longer um, this section I did not just do so let me see there I'm scrubbing pretty hard and you can't see it come up at all so I would call this waterproof I would give it a good long time to dry uh, it's been maybe three minutes since I did those little dots there so maybe five minutes ten minutes and you're good to go now I'm doing this on a um, Legion Stonehenge aqua cold press black paper which I really like I picked this up from Jackson's it's um quite thick and it's not buckling at all I really like that uh, so I'll take a pen here and I'll check off for the waterproof that the Uniball Sino is not waterproof but the Elmer's Painters White is alright so overall I like all these pens I was a little disappointed at the very light uh, Faber-Castell calligraphy art pen that it came out a little dry uh, I I hope that maybe with use it's a little a little more of the ink flows to the tip I did keep these level you are supposed to keep all these pens level don't put them in your pencil ki pencil uh, holder like this because all the ink drains out and it's not good for them once they're dry uh, it's, it's very hard to re-wet them they you know you get a lot of uh, uh, residue on the top and it's just not good so leave your pens when you're storing them try to leave them in a bundle leave them in a pencil case leave them flat like this uh, it's much better for them it'll, it'll give your pens a lot long, longer life but that aside I did like all of these uh, the one I was surprised about was the Faber-Castell Good Vibes the hand lettering one uh, that lightest one I'm not quite sure it hardly shows up on there it might be good if you're doing something like a, a highlight with a darker color next to it I, I don't think it's going to give me anything on a black surface it's, no it certainly doesn't it's meant for white but it would be for a highlight purpose only uh, so I'm not quite sure why they put that very very light one in I would have liked to have seen that a little darker but overall I do like all of these I still will go back to my standard my millenniums I do like those by Kurataki those just have a nice tip I just now running off out of the number three and I've used them over and over and over again that's a nice set it gives you a nice combination a nice variety I also like the Faber-Castell calligraphy art the uh, despite that gray one that was kind of um, low on ink I do like the colors I like these neutral colors and it does give you that black one in there as well so I do like this set uh, as well and I'll be using all of these of course over the course of my drawing. Now I hope this video gives you an idea of some of the uh, pens, how some of the pens perform. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think, and remember to hit that like icon. Don't forget to subscribe. Now I'll go over this a little bit so that you can see it in focus. You'll see the, the chart here that we've put out. Okay, so that gives you an idea of that. And I'll run it up a little bit so that you can see what got good marks, what got what didn't. And there you go. All right. I'll see you next time.